adjusted symptoms, developing vaccines that can be truly preventative and effective. You have heard about the extraordinary budgetary assignments to this disease. In the current year, the NIH is spending $252 million on AIDS research, and the President's request for AIDS research at the NIH alone next year is more than $423 million. Of those sums, more than 80 percent will be devoted to supportive research conducted by scientists across the country in medical schools, universities, hospitals, and industry laboratories. Truly, there is an organized national effort involving now many of the finest and most highly talented scientists of this country. To give you a little more information about the details of NIH programs, I would like to introduce to you Dr. Anthony Fauci, who is the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases since 1984. Since 1985, he has also served as coordinator of NIH AIDS research. Dr. Fauci. Thank you, Dr. Weingarten. Mr. President, Secretary Bowen, commissioners and guests, I'd like to spend the next few minutes outlining very briefly for you the NIH AIDS efforts, which can be divided into five major categories. The epidemiology and natural history of the disease, an effort we share with our colleagues at the CDC. The etiologic agent, the human immunodeficiency virus, its discovery and the delineation of the function of its genes. The pathogenesis, or the mechanisms whereby this virus destroys the body's defenses, thus letting it prey to infections and opportunistic neoplasms. Studies on therapy against the AIDS virus, as well as reconstituting the defective immune response, and finally, vaccine development. As Dr. Weingarten alluded to, the very foundation of our ability to be able to fight the AIDS epidemic lies in the fact that the entire NIH has a basic science base from which has emanated the research on AIDS. This has been a multi-institute phenomenon, and as you can see here, a variety of efforts that have been going on at the NIH for decades from multiple institutes, such as the entire cancer research program, studies on recombinant DNA technology, man in the late 70s by Dr. Gallo and his colleagues in the Cancer Institute that laid the foundation for the technology that allowed us to isolate this, as you see here, the causative agent of, H of, of AIDS. In addition to that, the advances over the last 10 years in molecular biology have allowed scientists here at the NIH and in NIH-supported universities throughout the country to be able to, as we call it, map the genome of the AIDS virus. By this we mean being able to point out and isolate each of the genes of the virus. This is of great importance because by recombinant DNA technology, the leading function of the virus, Two simple examples of that are the gene that codes for an enzyme, reverse transcriptase, responsible for the replication of the virus, is one of the major targets of the antiretroviral therapy. The outer coding of the virus, which is coded for by this envelope gene, allows us to understand the heterogeneity, which makes one virus a little bit different from another virus, even though essentially they're the same the differences have major implications in vaccine development. With regard to drug development, the steps are simple, although the goal is an ominous goal. The first is that before we even knew the amount of knowledge that we have now about the virus, we screened existing compounds. In fact, AZT was a result of the screening of a number of compounds looking for activity. Now that we know of the function of the viral genes, we can target the development of new compounds using structural biology as our basis. Then comes the preclinical development and testing, a major effort of the Cancer Institute. Clinical testing, collaboration with the FDA, licensure and distribution of drugs. In this regard, this map points out the 19 treatment evaluation units, which are funded by the NIH throughout the country, which right now are testing the very drugs that are being screened and developed here and in industry. It's a good collaboration between industry, the federal government, and academia. The purpose of these studies, these are numbers of cases 
that have now been entered into federally funded clinical trials in the units which I just mentioned. And right now we have approximately 1,000 individuals on clearly, very clearly controlled clinical trials. The types of trials that proved that AZT in certain types of AIDS was in fact effective. And finally, the approaches for vaccine development. There are a number of these, and we don't have time to go into each and every one, but I might point out this one here, and that is the use of recombinant DNA technology to be able to isolate one particular component of the virus free of all the other potentially dangerous components that might be injected into individuals to elicit a protective response. The mechanisms of that would be the following. We have NIH-funded, federal government-sponsored vaccine evaluation units in which a consortia of academia, industry, intramural NIH, and extramurally-funded components of the NIH system will feed into these evaluation units, ultimately for vaccine testing, to be able to identify a safe and effective vaccine. And I might point out, Mr. President and Commissioners, that it is clear that very soon, certainly within this calendar year, in the United States, we will be doing early phase one testing for safety in vaccines. Efficacy will probably take several years before we can determine that, but the test will start very soon. So in summary, the basic science base of the NIH has allowed us to take giant steps forward very quickly in attacking the AIDS epidemic. And what we'll learn about AIDS will certainly help us in understanding diseases of the 21st century. Hello? Have you been up long? I've just had a nightmare. Not to worry, I've just the thing. Holy shit.